Hey everybody, welcome again to Challenge Athletes Live. My name is Bob Babbitt from the Challenge Athletes Foundation. Our guests, two high school graduates and Challenge Athletes Foundation stars, Kelly Ray and Breezy Bohannock. How are you guys doing? Good. We're doing great. So, so Kelly, you're, you're back working, huh? You're waitressing and, and how much walking are you doing right now? I'm getting about 30,000 steps a night. So that's anywhere from like 12 to 13 miles on average. Wow. And, and Breezy, you're in the midst of uh, Ironman training? Yes. We've been training hard every day, all day, every day. So take me back. Both you guys were diagnosed with cancer really at, at about the same age. Were you both about nine, 10 years old? Yeah, I was nine when I was diagnosed. And I was 11 months behind at age 10. Wow. And at that point, you were both very athletic, doing lots of different sports. How impactful, when I read what Breezy said, I, th I thought this had meant both of you guys, really. I couldn't control cancer, but I could control the impact it had on me. W what did you mean by that, Breezy? And did that affect you as well, Kelly? I think just um, being so young, I, I didn't realize how scary cancer could be, but I realized that I could have a good attitude through it. So I was able to get through it just by being positive and having such an amazing family and community around me and knowing that there would be a good life ahead of me, no matter what, especially when I started looking at CAF and what they could do. And you met Sarah Reinertsen while you were in the hospital. And Sarah was the first single above knee amputee to finish the Ironman. What did she bring to the table for you? Yeah, honestly, it was a game changer meeting Sarah. That's when my dad showed me her video and I knew that I wouldn't be scared of amputation if I could still live such an active lifestyle like her. And so when she came to my home the, the day I got home from the hospital, she was just so kind and giving and showed me her prosthetics, showed, how, showed me how they worked. And I just wasn't scared for the future. I was excited for the future. So Kelly, for you, what, was there a point where you realized, okay, I think I'm going to be okay. I, I can still live my life. So my mom is actually an oncologist. Um, so it's a bit of irony in that I was diagnosed with cancer. So I'd always grown up sort of knowing what it was. My first three questions were, am I going to lose my hair? Am I going to have to stay overnight in the hospital? Um, and am I going to need chemo? So I kind of knew what I was getting myself into. I didn't know that I would lose my leg straight off the bat. Um, but when I did, when I found that out, um, my uncle was actually running a 5k in Seattle and he happened to run into Sarah Reinertsen. And I had, it was maybe like a week or so before my amputation. And he was like, hey, my niece just got diagnosed with cancer. Um, would you mind uh, FaceTiming her or talking to her? And he really, he, he got passed by Sarah on the race course. That, that's really how they became friends. Um, and so he introduced me to Sarah. That was my first connection with CAF. And I couldn't have thought of a better role model to have had. Um, and she kind of, she walked me through a closet. She showed me all her different legs. Um, and with a role model like Sarah, you, there's, you, you get to a point where you realize that there's really nothing you can't do. If you put your mind to something, you can accomplish it. I mean, she's kind of the best role model there is. So Kelly, when, when did you get back in the sport? So I pretty much got back into sport. I finished chemo in May of 2013. Um, and sort of, I walked one lap in Relay for Life the week after that because my prosthetic leg was still having issues healing because my blood counts were so low. And then maybe a month or two after that, I started biking, sailing, walking again. And then in November, October of that year, I met Breezy at a running clinic. Um, and that's sort of where I started taking my first running steps. So. And the relationship between you two has just blossomed, right? You got East Coast, you got West Coast. But you guys have that in common. You're the same age and missing both of, missing a leg. Talk a little bit about that bond. And the bond has gone beyond you guys. There's Haven Shepherd. I think there's like nine or ten girls all who are dealing with the same type of thing. Yeah. So, um, Haven pulled us in. She's, she's like that. She's amazing. Um, but it was really great knowing Kelly, like everyone actually thinks that we were doppelgangers for a while because we look the exact same, like same leg, same <laughs> hair. Like people would call us each other's names. It was always happening. And then we were able to get really close and just talk all the time, even though we couldn't see each other often. And as the years have gone by, more people have just joined our group. And it's honestly like amazing just having a group of kids who get it, but can still go and have fun and like forget about it, but know that we like share this. 
Yeah. When, it, yeah, go ahead, Kel. It's really interesting because I kind of got to ride Breezy's coattails in the beginning when everyone thought I was her. Um, but truth be told, I had Breezy is one of the best friends I've ever had because she can relate to me in a way that no other person can. We actually had a journal that we passed back and forth between um, San Diego, it would go to one person, and then when we met up in um, New York for the Heroes Heart and Hope Gala, it would go to the other one. So there's like a couple years worth of just journal entries in here talking about um, things that we did or whatever, how we figured out how to do certain things, what our favorite places were. Um, and I actually have it right now, so I feel kind of lucky. Yeah, but. send that to me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like, Breezy, after you had your leg amputated and you went back to school for the first time, I don't know if it was fifth grade, sixth grade, but it was important for you to be wearing shorts and for people to see your leg. Why? Yeah, I just didn't want to hide. And I was actually really excited about having a robot leg. I thought it would be really cool from the very beginning. Like, the, I think the day I got diagnosed, I was like, robot legs are cool. Like, what if, what if they just, you know, take it out right now and I get a robot leg? So I was always about that. And I just wanted to show people that cancer wasn't going to, like, define my life. But I wasn't afraid of being an amputee. And I wasn't afraid of getting back into sport and just being a kid and, and embracing it. So after you got your running leg, I think it was only, it might have been less than two weeks before you did Wildflower. When to do the wildflower triathlon with your running leg, and for people out there who don't know wildflower, we're talking a you know quarter mile or so swim, and then a mountain bike ride, right? A hard mountain bike ride, and then a two mile run in a leg that you'd really what been in for maybe ten days. Yeah, I I think yeah, I just got my running leg, and my dad asked if I wanted to do triathlon, and I had just no idea what that meant, so I was like sure that sounds fun and we had 10 days to train and if i had known how hard it was going to be i i would have been more hesitant but i'm actually really glad i didn't know because it ended up being really difficult but really really fun and rewarding and that's what like brought me into the triathlon world kelly deciding to swim in high school and swim with able-bodied kids how daunting was that and did you feel comfortable pretty quickly so um i had I've been swimming since I was about eight years old. I did a rec team in the winter. Um, and so from the time I finished cancer at about age 11 um, to going into high school, 14, those three years I swam again on an able-bodied rec team. So that part didn't scare me as much. Um, but going into my high school team, there were a lot of club swims and a lot of really, really great athletes. And sort of that kind of scared me a little bit because I was like, oh no, they're not gonna like me as much. But truth be told, the swim team has become some of my best friends. And on senior day this past year, my coach told the story of my first practice. Um, I took my leg off, it was leaning against the wall and I got in, I was doing my thing. And she, you know, she was like, oh, like that's impressive. And like, she's dancing around on the deck, whatever. There's a nice song playing and she knocks the leg over. And she's, she's, she has this moment of panic. She's like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And I look at her, I'm like, that's okay, I didn't feel it. Um, and so from that moment, me and, me and my coach, Katie Rickabon, who actually um, is the sister of, oh, I'm forgetting his name. That's really awkward. Uh, he was the second place Ironman world champion finisher this year. Um, she was oh, there. Wow. And she, she met Roderick and Rudy, and she told me, she was telling me all about these people. I was like, yeah, Katie, I know them. She's like, you know, I can't assume that all people without legs know each other. And I was like, I guess that's true. Um, but so she's really been really supportive from day one. Um, and I'm gonna miss her a lot next year. For both of you, what was, what was the lowest moment with going through cancer and getting to a point where I don't know where, where my life's going to go? What was the lowest moment for each of you guys? Um, I would actually say that I was really blessed through cancer to have just a lot of positive attitudes around me, but I think it was actually after that I hit lowest, um, just kind of getting back into normal life. And at first it was really good, but going through middle school and high school, which is rough for any kid, I started to realize like how my differences, not just my leg, but the way I viewed life because I like was close to death. I had had other friends who passed away. I just looked at everything so differently. Those were some of the lowest moments because I couldn't connect with anyone around me. And that's when I needed CAF most. And that's why it was so nice to always have that family because when like no one at school could understand the way I felt about things. Like I had a whole group of friends who knew exactly what it was like. For you, Kelly? 
I think it's probably a very similar thing. Um, I, during treatment though, my lowest point was I, they thought I had a nodule in my lung because osteosarcoma often metastasizes to the lungs after it um, grows in a long bone. I didn't, it was benign lymph node, but I had complications following that surgery and my left lung filled with a liter and a half of fluid. Um, so I was essentially partially drowning while just existing. Um, and so that was really scary. Wasn't really sure if I was going to make it through that one, but I did. Um, and so surprisingly, because of all the role models and positivity that I'd had throughout my entire treatment, um, losing the leg was not the scariest part. Um, it was sort of the other bits and pieces of that. Because I knew watching Sarah that everything I did, um, I was going to be okay. And Breezy definitely helped with that at the end of it. So she kind of, again, I wrote her coattails. I knew that if she was okay, I would be okay. Um, so I really can't thank her enough for that. Um, for both for both of you guys, how has because you you guys are veterans now, right? You've been dealing with uh, with coming back from cancer, prosthetic legs. How has that world changed in terms of more acceptance, less people staring since you were first for, since you first had uh, got prosthetics? Um, I would say just people have become like more accepting and more loving, and I guess I've owned it more. And I guess I see, I see how people are so intrigued by it and just walking around, people are so interested, but it's, it's nice to just be able to like show people the world and, and kind of have people see your legs and maybe be like, oh, I feel bad for that person. And then to go see you do amazing things and work out and do all these crazy things and show them like they can do anything they want to. I think that's been really interesting in the outside world. Mm -hmm. Kelly, for you? I think for me, um, I went from having an Oser four bar knee to a C leg. That transition um, made my stride a lot smoother. And I actually have a longer um, limb. So I'm a knee disarticulation, which is still technically above knee, but I have my entire femur. Um, and so it makes it easier for me to walk and bear weight. So I really walk with no real difference in my stride, which is weird because when I wear pants and I meet people for the first time, they don't actually notice. So I'm very conscious about whether or not I wear pants when I meet people because I don't want them to think I'm hiding anything because I'm not. But you know, sometimes it gets cold in Connecticut. You got to wear pants sometimes. <laughs> uh, yeah. When you, when I watched you speak one time, Breezy, and you, it was amazing. We were on the rooftop in La Jolla and you're speaking to this group and you basically draw a circle on the, on the uh, wall and say, this is your comfort zone. And then you made a, a dot outside of it and basically said, and this is where the magic happens. Yeah. And everybody, everybody there was just dumbfounded that this young woman could basically sum up life so amazingly. Uh, talk a little bit about taking what you've gone through and bringing it to other people so they can gain power from it. Yeah, I mean, I guess with that whole situation, I realized, and a lot of times I was a kid, so I was, you know, by the nature of going through cancer and stuff, I was pushed outside my comfort zone a lot, but I started realizing that it was leading to the most amazing opportunities and friendships. So I realized if you want all these great things in life, you're going to have to get outside your comfort zone. And that's just a message I wanted to share with people because it's scary and it's hard for so many people, but they don't realize that just getting outside your comfort zone just a little bit can change everything and can open up so many doors. And I feel like I've been so blessed with everything I've gone through. I just want to share the positive message with as many people as possible. So Kelly, goal, your goal, your head, you, both you guys, this has been sort of a weird year because normally we'd have these huge high school graduations, big parties and heading out. And this year, obviously with coronavirus, it's been a little more muted. Uh, Kelly, you're, were you heading off to college and what are the goals? So I actually am heading off to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill as a Moorhead Kane Scholar. And that's a program that's built on four characteristics, one of which is physical vigor. So I really have CAF to thank me for getting me into college um, because without them, I wouldn't have the activity piece of that. Um, and so there, I hope to remain active um, and sort of use the um, real true gifts that that program gives us to make the most of my college experience um, and see everything that I can accomplish and try a whole bunch of new things, um, which is definitely an attitude that CAF gave me. I love that. And for, for, for you, Breezy, where you so, heading off to? I actually decided um, a while back to take a gap year. 
because I just need, I just need a break from school. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to spend like all day, every day training for the Ironman in Arizona, which is November. And then after that, I want to take some time and travel. I want to see more of the U.S., see some national parks. I just want to see all the nature that fills America. Hey, so we have some of your CAF buddies who uh, decided they wanted to jump in on this call. Let's see who's in the waiting room. Danielle, can you let some people in from the in the waiting room? <laughs> Let's see who's there. They're trying to get in. <laughs> hey. Hey, Tyler. How are you? Happy birthday. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, hello. Happy birthday. <laughs> what? Happy, happy birthday. birthday. <laughs> Kelly Ray. Are you 18, Kelly? I'm 18. Today is my 18th. <laughs> You're an adult. Haven. Hi, Haven. Hi, Alex. Hi, Alex. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all these guys. Yeah. Alex Fara, Haven <laughs> Shepard. Okay. Are you guys, Haven, you going to lead the way here with the sing? Yes. Ready? Okay. Yep. We ready? Are. Everybody ready? Yep. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. <laughs> Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. <laughs> Happy birthday, birthday to you, dear Kelly. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday. Oh, you're showing me. I like that. A plus. No, I was. Oh. <laughs> hey, you guys were all on sync on my end. Mm -hmm. There oh, we go. Great. I like oh. that. <laughs> oh my goodness. How how does it feel to be an adult, Tally? Um, it's a little weird. I gotta be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, have you done anything spectacular? Um, my friends came over and they sat six feet apart from me in my backyard. Um, and we ate food from my favorite bakery. Oh, Thanks. how fun. Sweet. Hey, so Haven, how close is this bond between all of you guys? Um, I would say it's kind of like we see each other every day. That's like how close we are. You know, you have, these are the type of friends that we don't really need to talk to each other. Like we won't talk to each other in like weeks or months. And then we like start talking in the group chat again. And then it's like we never left San Diego. And that's kind of a crazy bond we all have because we all have similarities and we've all gone through similar things. So I just feel like us as a, like a, like not, how many people in our group chat? Nine people, nine feet, whatever. <laughs> I just feel like we just always have, always have this really special bond to where like, if I don't see you guys for like the next year in San Diego, I feel like we just pick up where we left off and like nothing's changed. Love that. Kelly, happy birthday from all of us at CAF. And I want to thank all of you guys for being such great role models for all of our kids. And for you, Kelly, how, how important is it when you come to San Diego and you see all these new kids, the next Kelly Rays and the next Breezies, and you guys have already blazed that trail, but seeing those kids there, how important is that for you to be the role model for them? Oh, the kids run is 100% one of my favorite parts. I love seeing all the little kids. Um, they beat me a lot because I don't always change into my running foot, but, um, my part, I love seeing little kids who know no limits because they have excellent role models. Um, and again, like I'm lucky I had breezy, but these kids are so awesome to look up to all of these wonderful people. I, they're b below me, but I'm sure they're above you on, I don't know. Anyways. Um, it. yeah, I'm, I'm jealous of them. They have great role models. <laughs> Hey, Kelly, happy birthday, and for both you and Breezy, congratulations on high school graduation. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much for being part of, of CAF, and we look forward to seeing where your journey takes you moving forward, and we look forward to being at Ironman. We might all need to do a little road trip to Arizona. Hopefully, the world will change. <laughs> we'll be able to all come to Arizona to, to watch Breezy come across that finish line. What do you think? Yeah. You guys in? Yeah. Woo! Yeah, I love it. This has been Challenged Athletes Live. Thank you guys for jumping in, and we'll catch you next time. All right. Happy birthday, Kelly. Happy birthday, Kelly. Happy birthday.